In this video, we'll talk about super powerful laptops and building custom AI models with Puget Systems. Real quick, you're watching VP Land. Special thanks to our sponsors for helping make our NEB coverage possible, Blackmagic and Atomos. And now back to the video. All right, I'm here with Matt from Puget Systems. Matt, good to see you again. Yes, good to see you too. Uh, so tell me what we've got going on here with your new laptops. Yeah, so we are getting back into laptops. Uh, everything that we've kind of learned on the desktop side, we're trying to pull down into the mobile space. So we're focusing on very high end, not uh -huh. Ultrabook. Uh, we like to call them a mobile workstation more than a laptop. But yeah, very high end stuff. So a lot of use cases uh, for people who want to do like Gen AI on the road, maybe even some light like virtual production, like running an LED wall. You can even kind of do that off of a laptop. How big of a wall could you run? Not something super big. Okay. But honestly, as at a show like this, like at NEB, you know, uh -huh. all these places that have you know, a, a small little LED wall going mm -hmm. in the background, something like this would be great. You don't have to chip a whole desktop. Just bring laptop, lock it down, plug it in, and you can go. Of course, there's all the traditional you know, video editing, obviously, yeah. motion graphics, you know, all those kind of things. You know, all the traditional stuff as well works really, really well on this right. laptop. And what are some of the sort of like unique specs or unique build outs that you're doing in your laptops that are kind of hard to find? with off-the-shelf uh, solutions. Sure, yeah, I mean, so the base hardware that's in these laptops, it's kind of similar to like desktop, where you could get the exact same specs mm -hmm. from other companies. The big thing that we always bring to the table is we are testing and qualifying these laptops for the workflows that people are doing, video editing, motion graphics, all that kind of stuff. And especially in a laptop, there's only so much power that can go into it, you know, how, how many watts, because you, know, you have to dissipate all that heat, you gotta uh -huh. provide that power. And in a laptop form factor, you can easily starve different parts from for power. And a lot of these laptops are kind of geared towards gaming. And gaming uses the hardware very differently than like Premiere Pro. Uh -huh. And we even found in our qualification that like, hey, for some reason, hardware decoding isn't working as well as it should. And it turns out the power profiles were slightly tuned wrong. And so that's kind of the, the value we bring is that we make sure that everything, even down to these nitty gritty details are right for these workflows. And that's why something like this might work better than you know, some other company that the base unit is could be the exact same thing, uh -huh. but we've tuned it right for these workflows. To so work for whatever you need to, yeah. you need to do it with. Yeah. All right. Shipping wise, uh, where are you shipping? So we are shipping uh, US, you know, we've always been US based uh, company. Uh, recently, we actually expanded out to Canada as well. So, you know, all those studios in Toronto, Vancouver, we're starting to do more and more there. That's not just our laptops, that's our tower workstations, that's our rack mount, all that stuff available in both uh, US and Canada. That's exciting, that's awesome. And uh, uh, speaking of AI stuff, you've also had desktop PC builds, kind of more two and four training your own models. Can you tell me about yeah, so AI is a big thing right now, yes, yeah. and people are really experimenting. And we have, you know, we have systems that are built for like stable diffusion image generation. Mm -hmm. uh, we have systems that are for LLMs. Those are usually more like server hardware. But yeah, you mentioned like training. Yeah, a lot of that stuff because just you know running you know stable diffusion or running like a ChatGPT kind of a model on a system, you can do that in a standard tower, not too difficultly. But once you want to get into training. You know, making it actually output the stuff you want, not just whatever random stuff is in the model. Mm -hmm. That's where you need quite a lot more like video card memory. Uh, the case of like LLMs, you need multiple video cards. They get into big complex setups. But yeah, we've been doing more and more of that as evidence. Yeah, we're kind of like everything model. Like, what have you been seeing people train, or like what type of models or what type of like use cases are they? Yeah, trying to do? sure. I mean, even our own internal, some of the things that we're looking at is like a GPT model. So like ChatGPT mm -hmm. that's been trained on all of our support documents or all of our hardware articles, just to give that extra little like that jump start into like, what could be the cause of this problem? Or, you know, what hardware should I buy for this thing? And, you know, I'm not going to trust AI to tell me the exact right facts for quite a while, even if it's been trained on all our, our own content. And I, I think most people are kind of like this, but it can give you that jump start. And then on like the image side, I mean, it's stuff that people have been doing for a little while, but now it's more accessible. Things like face swaps, or you can do storyboarding, and it can be the actual character over and over, not just a random, you know, animated boy, you know, on a street. It can be like the actual character that you are trying to do. I remember last year you had the demo of uh, Corridor Crew and mm -hmm. the Rock Paper Scissor anime yeah. short, and I mean, their process was they like sort of shot video and kind of converted the video to yep. the anime characters. Is it gotten to the point now where you do, like would not have to have that reference video, that source video, and you can kind of train if you give it enough images and get some like consistent characters? You can get some consistent. I the video side is the hard part mm -hmm. because if you tell an AI, I want a picture of this character walking, 
or whatever, like it's going to do it in very different. You're not going to be able to stitch those frames together because every it's not going to be cohesive. Uh, and there's a lot of work being done on that. So we're getting there. Uh, but right now, being able to give it that video as a source of basis to use for that. Because it'll look at you know the structure of the person walking and it'll actually map out, okay, I know like the arms are supposed to be about here and all that. And mm -hmm. that just it's using it as a reference. Uh, and at this point, kind of the difference between now and where we were a year ago with that video, the rock, paper, scissors video, is we can do it a whole lot faster yeah. and we can do it a whole lot easier. There's, there's a lot less like, Fiddling. Like fiddling with stable diffusion or what, what, what would be the less Well, because they had a lot of issues where like the AI would generate things and like it would add details and take away details randomly. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a lot more cohesiveness okay. now with the model. Is it, it can, you don't get quite as much of that. And by this time next year, we're probably going to be talking about how, hey, there's not even any of that. You just give it a prompt and it'll actually do the whole video. And we'll see. We're close with that with all the Sora things that you know yeah. is up in the cloud now. It's... Bring that down local so you can do it faster and train your own models on it. Like, it's going to be really cool. Speaking of Sora, one of the things that's been interesting or that I just kind of wondered about it, because uh, a lot of like in their paper too, they're like, yeah, a lot of the reason the alpha was so good is they just threw a lot more compute power at it. Yeah. And then I've seen some other papers saying like the amount of compute power necessary to generate those outputs is like extremely high. Is that also going to be a consideration in just like generating these realistic outputs? Or are you just going to have to like throw a lot of compute power at it that's like very expensive compute power. Yeah, you don't actually quite know everything that they're doing because they're, you know, kind of, are, they're, they're, they're publishing a, a lot, but not everything. So we'll kind of have to see how it goes. But I think one of the things we might see in the future, and this is a bit of conjecture, mm -hmm. is the things that are all in the cloud, the mid journeys, the Dolly's, the Sora's, I think they're going to have massive models because it needs to be able to do anything. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to be huge. It's going to require tons of processing power, lots of video memory or just memory in general. But the things we're going to be doing locally, I think it's going to be a lot more tuned. Mm -hmm. so smaller it's models. To, yeah, smaller models. models. Yeah, and it's, it's going to have to be forced because, you know, in a, I mean, probably not you're going to be doing this on a laptop, but yeah. like on a desktop, you only have so much resources you can throw at it. And so I think we're going to have to become more efficient with those models, which at the same time might actually make them a lot better. If that model only knows how to draw me, not any other character, and that's all I want, that's great then there's no chance of me randomly in one frame not having a beard because mm -hmm. it decided it doesn't to know pull from something else. Yeah, anything if, exists without a beard. Yeah, if all it knows is, yeah, I have a beard, yeah. that's it. It's never not going to do it. So I think it'll actually end up being very useful for the people that are using it for very professional level things, like Hollywood level use of AI. I think they are going to vastly prefer these very specific, very trained models versus these giant, enormous ones that can do anything. These Sora models. Yeah, and, and, and you know, they'll probably use both. Maybe they'll use like a Sora-ish model to get like yeah. the initial, and then they might run it through an AI again to like replace the character that Sora made with the specific character that they want. Mm. But uh, maybe so, keep the environment or something that they liked out yeah. of Sora. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so it, it might just become AI on top of AI on top of AI. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's already I mean, lot you of, kind of think of the node filters and like, Black Matter, like Resolve or something, where you're processing an image through like different nodes, and maybe yeah. it's a yeah. And we already AI node in the future. Kind of have that with uh, it's a front end called the Comfy UI for stable mm -hmm. diffusion. It's a node based one, and it gets incredibly complex. Uh, some of the things that people are doing, but that's how you get that really good quality output is these really complex things. I think a lot of people think, oh yeah, you type in a text prompt and it gives you something great, and it's really not. Like if you think that's that's what it's like, go give it a shot because it really it takes a lot of skill even to get the prompts, you know, correct for what it is you want. And then once you're trying to do everything else that AI can do, oh boy, it's it's going to be one of those areas where if you develop those skills now, you are going to get hired immediately if you want to start doing that. And yeah, I mean, we're talking about prompts and stuff. And do you feel like non-technical people can be more familiar, or at least aware, like there are different models. I'm sorry, we're talking about models, but there are different models. And like even uh, Adobe is like yeah, announcing like in Premiere, they're mm -hmm. experimenting with, you don't have to just use Firefly, you could use, switch out your generation with Runway or, or Pika. Pika, yeah. Um, so do you feel like people are going to be more aware of like, oh, different models do different things and it's going to kind of be part of like the vocabulary of like in creativity? Yeah, I think it's going to be something kind of similar to like Codex probably, mm -hmm. where like, you know, someone who's just doing home movies or like videos for their church, they probably don't really know anything about it and that's okay. Yeah, you know, they're just shooting something off of their camera. They're doing some quick edits, put it up on YouTube. That's fine. And then you have like freelancers. They're like, okay, I know and understand like HGVC and ProRes, but you know, that's kind of the extent. And then you have the upper level where, you know, 
they've got all their different raw formats and their different mm. bit depths and cover sub samplings and all that kind of stuff. I think it's just going to kind of be a tier like that, you know, yeah. so, you know, from basic to kind of like middle ground to advanced. Where that right level is, I really hope that companies like Adobe will provide that like entry ease for the people that are new into it and then give them the advanced things, which it looks like they're doing with their being yeah, able to select different models. Because yeah, I feel like a lot of AI tools, it's like, yeah, we do this thing and it's like, well, what's beneath the surface? And it's like, either they don't say, or it's just like ChatGPT wrapper, or uh, yeah. it's, uh, you know, I'm a open AI, some open AI model. Yeah, so having those options is an interesting step for them. And, and yeah. And some of them, you probably don't need options. Like their generative fill stuff, it's probably better. Than does it do it or does it not? <laughs> yeah, then it's just using their stuff. But yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see how this changes, especially in the next year. Because everything that like Adobe's doing, Blackmagic is doing a ton of stuff. Like mm -hmm. everywhere, everyone is starting to use these things. And the great thing, I think, is that a lot of what they're doing is the enhancement type of AI. It's huh. helping the editor or the storyteller do what they want to do. It's less the hey, let's replace you, it's right. the let's help you. Let's make a shot from scratch out of nothing. Yeah. It's, let's help yeah. you do your job faster. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. they like they're, I guess they did uh, uh, show off for the premiere some like, you know, creation of B-roll. Mm -hmm. So I guess there's some of that, but you know, creating that kind of a B-roll, it's never gonna quite match. You might be able to get away with it a little bit, but yeah. I suspect it's mostly gonna be used as like a filler, like, hey, we have to get this little bit of B-roll, let's throw this in for now. Right. An because. improvement over a black screen with text, like shot of a horse will come here. Exactly. Yeah. You can actually have a shot of a horse. Yeah. It might not be the right thing, but it helps, you know, the people who are going to go shoot the B-roll know mm -hmm. kind of what it is you're looking for. Yeah. Cool. It's exciting times and uh, appreciate it, Matt. Thanks yeah. for doing for the interview. Of course. Always happy to talk. Thanks. And that is it for this episode. Be sure to check out the rest of our NAB coverage over here at this playlist and hit the subscribe button for more videos like this. Thanks for watching. I will catch you in the next episode.